There are movies that are bad, good, or even great. And then there are the movies that don't just make you think, they change the way you think. They bruise your brain. It's with this in mind that IndieWire and The Playlist compiled a list of seven brain-bending favorites. They might turn your mind into a soft pretzel, but you'll be all the better for it. You state my assumptions. One, mathematics is the language of nature. Before Black Swan, Darren Aronofsky made Pi. Pi blends math, Jewish Kabbalah mysticism, and conspiracy theories that revolve on the elusive and infinite number of Pi. Max is a reclusive mathematician who's being hounded by a mysterious company who wants what he knows. Now give us the rest of the code so we can set it right! Meanwhile, he meets a number obsessed Hasid who ropes him into a new numeric challenge, but is warned by his retired professor that chasing Pi is a fool's errand. Max, however, is convinced that in order to discover the deeper mysteries of the number, he has to dance past the edge of madness. Maybe that pattern is like the pattern in the stock market, the Torah, this 216 number. This is insanity, Max. Or maybe it's genius. Reality bends and Max finds himself at the center of a conspiracy that is driving him insane. It burrows in the head profoundly in the end. Shane Carruth's primer contemplates the real-world technology that could, maybe, facilitate time travel. For a second, we're making a bigger one. He shot it for $7,000 in a grungy Dallas suburb and did almost everything himself, focusing on the nitty-gritty of what it would actually take to get the job done. There's no way I would tell anyone about this. No way. The movie is only 79 minutes long, with long stretches of tech-heavy dialogue and you really have to watch the movie repeatedly to understand all the sly, subtle gestures. Primer turns you into a cinematic gumshoe and you're all the better for it. Did you see that? I swear that was him. What the hell is he doing? Just sitting outside my house at two in the morning. You won't want to spend much time alone after watching Mulholland Drive for fear of your own fragile, twisted mind. Someone is in trouble. Something bad is happening. There you got me scared. Here's the plot. An amnesiac woman wanders into an apartment after a car accident on Mulholland. I don't know who I am. The apartment owner tries to help the woman remember her identity. That money, you don't know where it came from. And then the whole story flips, and it's revealed that the two women knew each other as actresses and as lovers. Along the way, there's a dead body, and the question of what's real and what's psychotic fantasy. And then, the really strange stuff starts. It's a movie that can stand up to repeated viewings, and it may be the lynchiest of David Lynch's films. That girl is not in my film! It's no longer your film. The Coen brothers' Barton Fink is full on dark. John Turturro stars as a New York playwright brought to Hollywood and wooed by commercial success. Welcome to Los Angeles, Mr. Fink. Excuse me? Only to find himself writing a low-rent wrestling movie. Just having trouble getting started. Wallace Beery, wrestling picture, what do you need, a roadmap? He lives in a dumpy hotel that also houses John Goodman's strange insurance salesman. Howdy, neighbor. By the end, the plot includes a missing novelist, a mysterious package, and a hotel fire. However, its existential and metaphysical quandaries never get in the way of a good joke. I'm a writer! The directorial debut of Charlie Kaufman, who wrote Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind and Being John Malkovich, is a puzzle that folds in on itself until you're not sure what's real. You smell weird. What do I smell like? It's like you're menstruating. I don't know. I don't, I don't menstruate, so I don't know. I can smell like I'm menstruating. It's Philip Seymour Hoffman stars as a theater director who's decided to construct an entire city inside a warehouse. What was this used for? Plays. Like theater plays? Populating it with actors who double as people from his real life. You're weirdly close to what I've visualized for this character. Glad to be weirdly close. The fact that Schenectady, New York works at all is pretty miraculous. But for it to work as well as it does is unthinkable. Its biggest supporter was Roger Ebert, who ranked it as the 11th greatest film of all time. Caden. What? When are we going to get an audience in here? It's been 17 years. Want to try drugs but don't want the legal hassle? Check out Gaspar Noe's Enter the Void. When a young American drug dealer in Tokyo is shot down by police, his spirit soars through the streets and the camera appropriates his floaty point of view. It's one of the most disorienting and outrageous movie experiences ever. Noe and his cinematographer were clearly inspired by psychedelic drug experiences and Eastern mysticism. Tibetan Book of the Dead. 
I'm assuming it's about death. By the time the movie is over, it shakes your blood. Jacob's Ladder has the elements of an ordinary psychological thriller. It's directed by Adrian Lin, who gave us Fatal Attraction, has a script from the writer of Ghost, and stars the lovable Tim Robbins. What's wrong? Oh, this is one of those days. However, he's playing an emotionally bruised Vietnam vet who suffers through increasingly surreal nightmares as his grip on reality comes undone. Who are you? I can block the ladder. And Lin eases you into the weirdness in a way that feels natural, which makes the strange stuff even more disturbing. Visually, this movie lets loose, especially in a scene where the vet starts hallucinating on the dance floor. <laughs> Sex, death, life, love, it's all intermingled in Jacob's Ladder. Where do you want to go? Home. This is your home. You're dead. I'm not dead. What are you then? I'm alive. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos and click on the link in the description to head over to IndieWire.com for more brain-bending movies.